Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kerman. Today's poem is by George Herbert. He lived from 1593 to 1633. So, another poet who died relatively young. In his 30s, he became a devout clergyman. His poetry was not published until 1633, after his death, and didn't become truly popular until the 19th century, when, as William Harmon writes, a renewal of interest in religious poetry came about. The poem that I'm going to read today is called The Pulley. This is how it goes. When God at first made man, having a glass of blessing standing by, let us, said he, pour on him all we can. Let the world's riches, which dispersed lie, contract into a span. So strength first made a way, then beauty flowed, then wisdom, honor, pleasure. When almost all was out, God made a stay, perceiving that alone of all his treasure rest in the bottom lay. For if I should, said he, bestow this jewel also on my creature, he would adore my gifts instead of me, and rest in nature, not the God of nature. So both should losers be. Yet let him keep the rest, but keep them with repining restlessness. Let him be rich and weary, that at least, if goodness lead him not, yet weariness may toss him to my breast. Like many of George Herbert's poems, this one, The Pulley, has that aspect of a sermon to it. And that can make it a little bit disorienting and not in keeping with the kind of poetry that people particularly are fond of today. It can be a little bit didactic, I suppose. But in this poem, didactic as it perhaps might be, has some really rich uh, psychological depth to it. At its heart is the idea that our own restlessness is God's pulley, the thing that pulls us towards him, the hinge on which our relationship with him rests. The essential question to the poem is, why are we so restless? We've been given so many great things. We've been given uh, beauty and the ability to uh, ascertain wisdom, to gain wisdom. We've been given pleasure. We've been given honor. And yet, we're always longing for something more. And Herbert says that restlessness is what, despite all those beautiful things, pulls us towards God. Herbert was, a, was an Anglican minister. He became a priest later in his life. And was very devout, and that devotion, uh, up until his death at the age of 39, led him to, to produce much of this poetry. And I always think that his, his poetry must have come from observing his parishioners, observing the people that he was serving and speaking with and worshiping with and answering their questions and hearing their, their concerns and their struggles. And in many ways, I, I feel like his, his poetry is a response to those struggles. It's uh, perhaps not deeply encouraging to them, but it's at least a way of reckoning with the things that his parishioners were going through. I mean, I don't know that that's the fact, but that's how I imagine it. But William Harmon also mentions that the glass of blessings that, that Herbert mentions here has some kinship with Pandora's box. Of course, Pandora's box brought curses, right? God's blessings bring, well, blessings. But there's an inversion of that classical mythology, an illusion which adds a great deal of depth to it. But the first person narrator putting putting the poem in in God's thoughts also lends some depth to this poem. I think that had it not been in his voice, from his perspective, it would have felt even that much more didactic. Because in this sense, it makes it so much more relationship oriented. It makes it about pulling as opposed to pushing. If it's from man's perspective, it's about being pushed towards or pulled towards God. It's, you know, it's very passive. But here, the pulley is an active thing. You're on the end of the pulley. We're being pulled towards someone. And I think that, that that's very powerful, that that action, that distinct action, is, uh, is a nice touch by Herbert. But I'll read it one more time for you. Here's Herbert's The Pulley. When God at first made man, having a glass of blessing standing by, let us, said he, pour on him all we can. Let the world's riches which dispersed lie, contract into a span. So strength first made a way. Then beauty flowed, then wisdom, honor, pleasure. When almost all was out, God made a stay, perceiving that alone of all his treasure rest in the bottom lay. For if I should, said he, bestow this jewel also on my creature, he would adore my gifts instead of me, and rest in nature, not the God of nature. So both should losers be. Yet let him keep the rest, but keeping them with repining restlessness. 
Let him be rich and weary, that at least if goodness lead him not, yet weariness may toss him to my breast. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another one. Thank you.